Hello, I'm Greg Redkin, Redkin Mods, and welcome to another unboxing video, the first unboxing video of 2020, courtesy of Jay Bry. All three of these boxes are from him. He shipped them all out the same day, all in three different boxes. He could have probably combined them into a box, but his excuse is he didn't have a box big enough for him. I don't know what's in these boxes because this is a combination of stuff I've bought from him in the last like year and a half or two years. I've known Jay for some time now. How about that, Jay? But um, this is a combination of stuff that I just haven't been able to go over there and film picking up because going over there and filming is a bit of a problem right now. Uh, but I will eventually be doing another episode over there because he's still got a lot of stuff over there that he couldn't ship. Um, although, I can tell you one thing, none of this stuff in here has an EMAC in it, because you can tell these boxers are too small uh, to fit an EMAC in them. But he's got an EMAC, he's got an iMac G3 that I was going to use for parts. A um, few other things that are still mine that... Um, in fact, I think he still has one of my Quicksilvers and a bunch of other stuff. Now, I'll have to go over there and film picking up because they're not going to survive shipping and it would be really expensive. So he's still storing that. But this is a bunch of stuff that I've bought in the last year and a half or so. Uh, and I've lost track of what I bought from him. But I finally said, well... It's time to ship it out to me because I can't get down there to get it. And I know you're complaining about not having any basement space, Jay. So I hope this cleared up some basement space for you. Uh, so we're going to be unboxing these three uh, boxes here and see what's in them. I have no clue what's in them. I think there's some iBooks in them and some MacBook Pro parts. But other than that, I don't know what's in here. So or find out, so let's get to it. All right, guys, so we've got the three boxes right here. I'm trying to figure out how I'll open them. Um, should just be able to peel off this edge here. Like so, look, bubble wrap. All right. So, let's see. Okay. First things first is this right here. <laughs> I know what this is. I know what this is. This is a wireless Bluetooth keyboard. This is an Apple keyboard uh, wireless Bluetooth, um, a Bluetooth keyboard. Um, this is one of the first Bluetooth keyboards Apple ever made, and it happens to also be my favorite uh, keyboard design Apple ever made. I use these keyboards all the time. Uh, this is my first wireless version, and he actually had torn this down and restored it and cleaned it for me. So this is as new as you can get when it's still used. It's, it's clean, I could lick it, I'm not going to. But, um, yeah, this is pretty neat. As we can see right here, I don't know if I have this in the frame very well. That is just a wireless keyboard. And uh, it's very, very nice. If we uh, take the battery doors out here. I don't remember how many uh, batteries this requires. It requires four double A's, it looks like. So yeah, that's gonna take a lot of juice, but it's nice, because this thing's like, it's pretty nice. It's in good shape. I remember how much I paid for it, and I'm not gonna tell you how much I paid for it, but I remember buying this and wanting him to mail it to me for a long time now. This is probably a year since I bought this. And the only thing that I don't like about these keyboards, but then again it makes sense because it's Bluetooth, is there's no USB on it, but you can see where it would have been um, if this was the uh, wired one. And of course it would have been right here. But uh, that's where the battery compartment is, so 
yeah, that's my first uh, wireless version of this keyboard. And I'm probably going to end up buying another one in the future. I don't know if Jay still has a few. I might buy another one off of him. But I just love the feel of these keys. This was the best keyboard Apple ever made, modern anyway. Um, well, I think it kind of ties with the, um, here. I think it sort of ties with the black first generation pro keyboard a little bit. I like these too. Um, plus they have adjustable feet where this doesn't. It's just a, a triangle basically. But this is just a great feeling keyboard. I love these things. And it's kind of a shame Apple stopped making normal keyboards. Because the chick click keys and me, I, we just don't see eye to eye. So that's the first thing. Let's see what else is in this box. This looks like an iBook. It definitely probably came to me in one piece. Wow, that's a lot of bubble wrap. Yeah, ooh, what is on top of that, Jay? All right, this is a translucent model, uh, not one of the opaque ones. It's broken. I, a few of these I bought for parts to rebuild other systems. But I honestly don't know which is which. It's a weird hybrid. I think this was built out of uh, a few different parts. I want to. I don't have a clue what the specs are on this. This is a 800 megahertz. 14 inch, I think. I never knew they made them in this case style. Um, I'm not. I'm not sure. This might have. Been, they might I actually come to think. I think they released an 800 and then re-released the 800 later. This one's an interesting system here. It's got some uh, interesting orange goo on the top. I'm sure Jay didn't do that. Uh, not eating any burritos on top of it, I'm sure. So, we <laughs> got that. Uh, let's see what else we got here. This box is already getting really light. Oh, I hope that wasn't important. What was that? Oh! As a lot of you guys may not know, but you have probably seen in some of my videos in the background. I am a Zippo collector. And Jay wanted to give me his very first Zippo he ever had in the States when he uh, immigrated in. And here it is right here. It's a very beautiful Zippo. Thank you, Jay. Yeah, it's in really good shape. He used it. It's a user. It might have be, might be missing a plate on the front of it, but it's nice, Jay. Thank you. And as you can see, I, I, I actually do have Zippos here because I use them for wire treatment and stuff, uh, to shrink wrapped and stuff. Uh, I even have some other ones, but uh, like I've got this uh, armor and this one, which was custom built by me, out of a, a broken case, Zippo redid the top, and then I had a friend laser engrave the top of it. Um, I also added the pasty on the front of it, which is an Apple logo, and it actually blends in really nicely. I think this is a 78 model, but yeah, you're not here for this, although it's, it's fun stuff for me. You're here for all the rest of this, so let's continue on. So thank you, Jay, for that Zippo. It means a lot especially since it was your first one. And I'm going to keep that as a nice centerpiece for my collection. And someday I might show you guys my Zippos. Who knows? It doesn't really blend into this uh, channel, but um, 
My old channel, I, I talked about Zippos a lot. You don't want to see those videos. They're kind of boring. Ah! So this is a card bus Wi-Fi card, which is wireless G, and it has an adjustable antenna, so you can point it in whatever direction. This is supposed to be Mac compatible. This is the Mac version. They had a black version for PCs. I looked it up after Jay's uh, asked if anyone wanted it a few weeks ago. And this is the Mac version. So this gives you, I guess, airport extreme compatible Wi-Fi. Uh, who knows, it might need a specific driver, but it's pretty neat. I mean, you don't see stuff like that. And that's, it's cool. So I got that. And it might be the end of this box. Yeah, that looks like the end of the box. Let's go through the packaging. Yep, that's the end of the box. So we can toss this to the side. This one, he taped the end on it. See if we can peel it up here. All right. what this is. Oh, it's heavy. Ah, um, I still have no clue what it is. I remember buying that. It looks like the only thing in here. Let's see here. Ah, oh, I know what this is. These are part systems that are just totally going to be used as parts, and that's it, and then be tossed out, probably. But I said I had some Mac Pro, uh, MacBook Pro parts coming in for this right here. Whoa. Yeah, I don't want to drop that. Have parts coming in to rebuild this. I think these are the parts systems part systems. Let's see what we have. I thought he was just going to be giving me the LCD assemblies and maybe a bottom case. At least <laughs> it looks like full uh, fledge uh, MacBook Pro sir, Jay. Um, ooh, was not expecting to see that. They seem kind of small, though. I swear these look kind of small. I guess they're not. These are 17 inches. Okay. Now let's finish unboxing them. I just know one thing. We won't have to worry about parts to rebuild the other one. These all have really bad problems with them. They're not salvageable for anything, but I think the LCDs and maybe the keyboards. He taped it quite nicely. I'm just trying to get them apart. Okay. So I think these are both in really, really good shape. Um, case-wise, from what I can see. Ooh. 
They're really light. They are basically empty shells. They're still taped shut. <laughs> okay. Now let's see if we can open it. All right, here's the glossy one with a piece of tape over the eyesight there. Honestly, I might just move mine straight into this case. This is really nice. Then again, what am I going to do with all the parts I bought? But this is really nice. Uh, very pretty machine here, as we can see. And this is strictly a parts machine. It feels very empty. Um, I don't think there's anything in it. And it rattles. But it's, it's a really nice. So thank you, Jay, for that. This is basically the system that's going to rebuild that system. Um, but now I kind of just want to use this case. It's kind of bugging me now that I have all the spare parts. But thank you, Jay. There's one. Let's look at the other one. A little message from Jay. Tighten the hinges and slap a better hinge cover on and you're all set. I guess this one, it still feels really light. It's empty. Uh, but, yeah, this is the anti-glare, which I couldn't think of the name of for the channel update that I filmed yesterday. Yes, it was only yesterday. This is just literally the next day. Um, that's why this stuff's still sitting here because I haven't had time to move it out of the way. But this, wow, this is uh, in fact uh, quite worn out. And as you can tell, there's no board in it. As we can see right here, it's completely empty. But it is a part system for sure. So it's, it's, it's rough. But... He tossed it in for a very good deal. Um, basically, I got all these things for, ooh, all these parts. These, once again, are strictly part systems. I got all these parts for uh, about a fourth of what getting everything would be straight from a seller on eBay. So let's open it up here. And this is the anti glare which is very filthy, but um, it's not bad looking. In fact, I do kind of like that. I don't know, I'm still 50-50 on going anti-glare or just regular glass. Um, it's, it's, in, it's in the system, it's, it's in rough, rough shape. In fact, this looks more like a 2009-ish Maybe a 2010 model. It started out as because it's got the older keyboard style on it. But it would still work on the 2011. So, there's something sliding around in there. But, yeah. Thank you, Jay. So that's that box. Now, what is in this box? Because I have no clue. We only have found one iBook so far, and I know I bought more than one iBook from him in the last few, uh, last year or so. So this probably has iBooks in it. iBook G4 12 inch, four times USB extension cables, which I needed uh, the other day. Now I'm getting them. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I needed an extension the cable uh, the other day. So this is the first box. There's another box in here. 
We'll go what, what's going in there in a second. But, let's see what's in this box. Is a 12 inch 1.2 gigahertz iBook G4. Battery works, but it's a weird looking battery. And it's full of hair. And if you can see that, it's got a bunch of hair in it. You J. <laughs> but yeah, it's a it's a 1.2 gigahertz. It says it holds a charge. Uh <laughs> That's interesting. It's got uh, the classic yellow keyboard and a Lotus sticker, which, uh, okay. Whoever had this must have liked Lotus. Uh, okay. So, yeah, that's that. I bought, bought these iBooks to rebuild. I've been rebuilding a lot of them lately. Uh, we'll probably cover some in the future. Um, but there is, I know for a fact, at least one part system in here somewhere. Uh, we'll find it. This one. This is a 1.7, uh, 1.07 gigahertz. <laughs> Woo, that's, that's rough. That's, that's really rough. But it's functional, and that's... I always go function over um, ooh, over quality of appearance. Usually, this looks like it's been in a rusty environment, uh, probably long before Jay ever got a hold of it. But it's supposed to be fully functional, if I remember correctly. And uh, it's missing some keys. You can still get keyboards to replace it. see here. One point one one thousand sixty four megahertz. Cool. Cool cool cool. So yeah. Can't get the keyboard back on now. There we go. So that's that. And then, we've got a bunch of keyboard extension cables. These were literally meant for Apple keyboards. As you can see here, it's got the notch in them. But these are actually very useful because you can still wedge any USB plug basically into it. We have four of them right here, which comes in handy. I use one of these, in fact, for... Um, um, charging my iPhone, I extend my actual uh, lightning cable with one of these in my car, and then I can pass it through the car to other people, and it always can still be plugged in. So these come in handy. So we got that. Anything else in here? No. Well, there's at least one more package in here. I haven't read it yet. One times iBook G4 14 inch parts machine for LCD. Oh yeah. Yeah, I have a um, 14 inch G4, I think. Yeah, I do. The 14 inch, what was it? The uh, 1.42? I think that, yeah, 1.42 in the original box that I have, its LCD is kind of melted uh, and really discolored. I literally bought this so I could rebuild that. So, I don't know why he, okay, he, he taped it for 
because he didn't use the adhesive. Okay, that makes sense. So this is literally a parts system, again. It's probably in not great shape, but I don't know because I haven't seen it in like a year. I apparently bought it from him for 10 bucks, literally just for the LCD. Started out as a one gigahertz. I don't think it works at all. But we can always try to plug it in and see. It is quite filthy. It's got a nice hard sticker on it right there. Yeah, isn't it nice? But yeah, it's woo, it's a little dirty. But hey, it's a part system. So yeah. I think that's everything. It looks like everything. So yeah, thank you guys. Uh, thank you, Jay. Thank you, Jay, for all this stuff. Um, you know what? Let's try to plug these in and see if they'll boot up really quick. I'm curious. Even this one, I don't think it will boot up. Probably doesn't work at all. But we can try it. We'll plug them in and see if they work. And then we'll wrap up the video. So let's get to it. Okay, I am now in free-handed shaky cam mode. So sorry for the shakiness. I'll, I'll stop doing that. But um, I'll try to keep it as stable as possible. But I just want to power them on and see what happens. So we'll quickly go through this, then wrap up the video. This is the 1.2. Let's press the power button and see what happens. Well, that's a good sign, I guess. There we go. It's powering up and booting into something. We'll see what it boots into. Looks like Tiger. This is running. Everything's working fine, and it is indeed Tiger. It's got, it looks like maxed RAM. I think that is the most RAM you can put into one of these. So awesome. So that one works. So now we can shut this one down. So this one is confirmed working. Let's go on to, well, we have it right here. Let's see if the parts one works. I don't think it does at all, and oof, it is filthy. Well, it's got a connection. It turned orange. It might power on. Let's see. Powered on. Hey, how about that? Huh. You know what? This one might be worth saving if it continues working. It's, we're just going to take this keyboard and throw it in the trash, but you can get a new one. I'm not going to try to clean that nastiness. I didn't even know this thing had a hard drive in it, so how about that? Snaps Pro X Professional Screen Capture Tool for Mac OS X. Interesting. It's got some interesting, strange stuff on here. It is Proteus. Interesting. 
but let's see if it's running properly. One gigahertz powered PCG4 with uh, the minimum amount of RAM, I think. I think that's the minimum. So, yeah, it, it works. I'm a little shocked and still kind of grossed out that I'm even touching this keyboard, but hey, Jay didn't do it, and he wasn't about to try to clean it either. I wouldn't blame him either. So, that one works. I'm a little shocked on that one. Who knows, it might be worth trying to save. But in that case, I would have to find another LCD. But, yeah, it's not that big of a deal. So, close this one. And now, let's plug in this G3800 here. 14 inch, looks pretty okay. It's a little dirty, but it's held up a lot better than that parts system. That's a good sign. Let's see. Sounds like there's something in the optical drive. I don't think it has an opt operating system on it. It should have probably tried by now. I am curious what's in this drive though, because it does sound like there's something in here. But it powers on, so it, it at least sort of works. So let's try to get it to eject. What is in this, Jay? Is it going to eject? Huh. Okay. Hold in the mouse button. Let's see if that ejects it. Maybe it will be another copy, a copy of Elf. That would be hilarious. It's still not ejecting. It, it's acting like it's trying to boot off of it. Huh. It just will not eject it. Okay. Oh, there it goes. What is it? Apple Diagnostics. Ah, okay. Thank you, Jay. This is uh, 2.5.8. I don't know if that one actually works on this, but I think he might must have been testing it. Let's see if it will go into it, because now I'm just too curious. Option. Okay, the optical drive might not work at all. I should have at least seen it. It's not doing anything. So that might have been the problem. He couldn't test it. Oh, hey, hey, how about that? Well, let's see if it works. Enter. Hmm. Well, one thing, it's really painfully slow. There it goes. Let's see what it does. Well. This isn't a good sign. It stopped doing anything. Invalid memory access at. Okay. 
So yeah, it crashed. And that error is probably for a RAM related issue. I'd have to look that up. It sort of works. We'll go with it sort of works. So, so far two out of three isn't that bad. So we'll unplug this. And the last one is the 1.07 gigahertz, which they advertised as a one gigahertz, I think. Um, they could have probably just lied and said it was a 1.1 when you think about it, but they didn't. So you were actually getting more than you paid for. It went amber, so let's try it. It's booting up. This appears to be Panther? Julie Finn. It's probably not gonna let me log in. Salt and oh god! People don't understand how passwords work, do they? Pap per. <laughs> okay, so yeah, this score probably have to be wiped. It's missing a lot of apps down here. What were we missing? IDVD. Garage band. Huh. I think this is a mildly corrupt install actually because preferences is missing. But let's see. Yep, this is Panther and it's running with the base RAM, I think. I think these came with 256. So, yeah, not bad. It's this system's going to need probably the work, the most work um, if I decide not to try to fix the parts system. Um, this system's pretty nasty. But, yeah. It works. So I'm happy with that. So now I'm going to shut this down. And we're going to actually do um, a wrap-up video separately here. So I'm going to set this thing back up on the tripod, and we'll wrap up the video. So I'll see you then. All right, guys, before I end the video, I would like to mention that I got the 512-gigabyte SD card for that iPod Classic I mentioned in the Spring 2020 update video. It came in the same time as all the rest of the stuff that Jay sent me. Uh, Jay didn't send me this. Samsung actually sent me this. I ordered it directly from them, so I knew I got the real deal. So, yeah. It's going to be going on that iPod very, very soon. It might be the next iPod video. We'll see. But we got that, and we've got a few other things that came in the mail today, uh, including a um, almost terabyte, a 960 gig um, SSD for my 2012 Mac Mini. So, awesome. But anyway, guys, that's the end of today's video. Um, before I go about sponsorships and all this stuff, I do sort of actually sort of kind of have a sponsorship through Jay, too, because I'm on his main page of AppleSerialNumberInfo.com. Go check that out. AppleSerialNumberInfo.com is the best place you can go to check your Apple serial number and see what specs your Mac originally came with, when it was made, and all that stuff. Jay has had it since day one. He has all of this, this stuff compiled. It's very interesting. And Jay does need your help um, getting more serial numbers. He's looking for older Macs and newer Macs. Um, so Macs around the beige era, 
he wants you to give you uh, give him your um, serial number and uh, the specs about it, and he can start making his database work for that. He also wants newer Macs like the brand new Mac Pro. Go submit your serial number there. Don't worry, your serial number is not going to be stolen. Everything is confidential. And um, the way he talks about it, it's automatically deleted after he does everything. Basically, the database is just compiling all the serial numbers to figure out how it works, um, the serial number layout, so it can identify what's in what. So your serial number isn't stored there, uh, but you can still look it up. It's pretty neat. So go check it out, appleserialnumberinfo.com. Um, and also Jay got me this sponsorship um, because he works for sellyourmac.com. So don't forget guys, I am sponsored by sellyourmac.com. So if you have an Apple device you'd like to sell, just go to sellyourmac.com slash mods and sell them something. It will help them out. Uh, well, it will help me out and it will help you out. It helps them out because eventually they make money off of it, but it helps you out first because you're getting money and then it helps me out too because you're using my affiliate code, which helps. So yeah, I messed that one up really bad, didn't I? But anyway, also don't forget to check out Jay's channel right up here, uh, The House of Moth. Uh, a lot of interesting stuff, especially with Xserves. So if you're interested about Xserves, a lot of people really enjoyed my Xserve raid unboxing video. Uh, I need to do something with that soon, but haven't yet. He talks about all that stuff, including the Xserve raid videos. Pretty fun stuff. So check that out. I also have a link to his blog below. And thank you, Jay, for sending all this to me finally. Um, I did want to pick it up personally, but I'm kind of glad I did because this would have taken forever to film at your house. <laughs> but anyway, also don't forget guys, I do have a Patreon if you'd like to support me and see these videos a day early, usually a day early, sometimes even earlier than that. Come and support me. It would help me out, help me buy more stuff like this that we just unboxed. So that would be awesome if you could help me out there. But of course, this channel is free. Uh, as long as you're watching my videos, watching my ads, the ads give me revenue. It helps me buy this stuff. So, yeah. But if you want to go the extra mile and even get your name at the end of the video, which you'll be seeing, um, you know, come and support me. Uh, and I, I'd greatly appreciate it. But anyway, guys, that's the end of today's video. And thank you for watching. This has been a Rocky Mods video.